type in a Y, and then YouTube pops up. You put in a T, you get Twitter, and P gets you. Man, what's up, y'all? What it do? It's your boy, Kano, bro. And I bro, today, we are going to be reacting to the odd ones out. The internet changed me. I ain't gonna lie, the internet had changed here. Like, he is legit one of the biggest animators that we know of our time, bro. Of our time in the YouTube business. So, I can kind of see it. So, we about to go ahead and get into it. May I have your attention, please? Your attention. Please. May, may I have some? Please. What if I put up <laughs> gameplay of Subway Surfer and used a robot voice? Would, would that keep you <laughs> stimulated? Wikipedia says that people born between the year 1981 and 1996 are part of a group called Millennials. And I am a 96 baby. Hello, year of the rat. What's up? <laughs> I'm cusping on that millennial Gen Z line. So I can relate to all you Gen Zers, okay? I know what cap means. I know what drip means. And I also don't remember where I was when 9-11 happened. However, Gen Z, there is... I wouldn't even want yet when that shit happened. Is a difference between us. We're both a generation that grew up on the internet. But you grew up with the internet. We grew up with the internet. The internet didn't used to always look like this. It has metamorphosized a multitude of times. Now, if you talk to an older millennial, they'll tell you the horror stories of the late 90s internet. How the internet used to be paired with your home's landline. And if you don't know what a landline is, Good. If you wanted to surf the net at blazing speeds of 7 kilobytes a second, then you couldn't use your telephone at the same time. This was before texting even existed, so if you needed to talk to someone, you had to call them and look up their phone number in that 20 pound weapon known as a phone book, and then if- Bro, we still got some of the motherfuckers, bro. Someone else was using the- My question was, how did the phone book number get your number? I didn't ever know how the hell they got each other number. Internet, they'd get the pleasure of listening to Although if I had to make a sound that represented the entire internet it would sound exactly like this. Yeah. I didn't grow up with dial-up, but I did grow up in a time where the internet looked completely different. By the time I was exploring the interwebs, we got speeds up to one megabyte per second. <laughs> so the highest quality video you could stream on YouTube was in 240p, or this big. And it would still buffer a lot. Gen Z, you weren't there when YouTube had a five-star scoring system and the subscribe button was yellow and people would put these things all over their videos. You weren't there when the videos were in a four by three aspect ratio because that's what TVs looked like. You weren't there when a background for a website would be a never-ending grid of a JPEG and music would play against your will and your cursor would turn into a sparkly wand and... <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Whatever happened to that? And then the person who built the website would go, Hmm, it's looking pretty good. But you know what this web page really needs? A counter that'll tell you the total number of people who visited. Let me just copy this HTML code I found online. And if you're around my age and you also had unsupervised computer time, then great, you were also there to experience the pre-puberty years of the internet. Yep. Try to imagine the internet without social media. No Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or MySpace. Were people back then just not talking about themselves or sharing their opinions online? Were we as a society more connected with the people we knew? I probably would have liked it because I, I would have had to do fucks on YouTube. Knew in the real world? <laughs> no, of course not. People have been sharing their opinions online since day one. They were just doing it on random message boards. I know it sounds trivial nowadays, but there was once a novelty in being able to type anything you wanted into the computer and then someone else you didn't know would instantaneously respond. Even Neopets, a game tart you didn't know know would instantaneously <laughs> respond. Even Neopets, a game targeted to children, had chat rooms and let anyone send unfiltered messages to children. I'm surprised I didn't meet any weirdos that send unfiltered messages to children. I'm surprised I didn't meet any weirdos. That's one thing. Filtered messages to children. I'm surprised. I didn't meet any weirdos. That's one thing that'll never change with the internet. There will always be weirdos online. 
In fact, most of a weirdo's life is spent behind a computer. I would know. I think hm. people loved sending messages so much that sometimes your friend would send you a message that said, You've just been hit by the duck truck. Send this message to 80 of your friends and you'll be as sexy as a truck. Ignore and you'll be hit by a 16-wheeler. You have seven <laughs> days. And instead of blocking that person, some people would keep the chain going. Hey, I have a quick question. When was the last time you ever had to type a specific website into your address bar? Hmm, probably somewhere about 10 years, give or take. You just type in a Y, and then YouTube pops up. You put in a T, you get Twitter, and P gets you picturesofalligators.com. <laughs> and if you had a specific question you wanted to ask the internet, you just Yahoo it, right? Yahoo? Oh, no, that's not the one you kids are using. You kids are using that new search engine, right? Ask Jeeves? I know there's like Click four main Jeeves. websites that everyone goes on, but back then, instead of having a social media account, people made their own websites. So there were a bunch of different websites for you to explore, and to help you find those websites, you had a few search engines to pick from. Everyone loves to dunk on Bing for even attempting to be a search engine, but back in the day, Google had some competition. Obviously, I can see why Google ultimately won the search engine battle. <laughs> Google is a great company and I would <laughs> recommend Google to all my peers and coworkers. Mm -hmm. I love Google. As much as I love Wait, did the you internet, take your skin off? coworkers, I love Google. <laughs> as much as I love the internet, some of the best memories we had on the computer weren't even on the internet, were they? Sometimes the internet would just go down. But did that stop us? Did we go outside? No. We were still able to supply ourselves with hours of entertainment even without an internet. All you had to do was- Bruh, so I had about a whole bunch of game footage. I'm mean, had the Fairy Opera, Diego, Spumball, Jimmy Neutron. Click start, all programs, accessories, games, and then- Hey, you play the fuck out of damn pinball. Space Cadet Pinball. I guarantee every millennial watching this right now just got hit with a big wave of nostalgia. This game might seem simple because there's only two buttons that you can press, but when you really got into it, this game had a whole lot more going on. Trust me, Space Cadet Pinball was all we had sometimes, and I cherished every second of it. But if you were anything like me growing up, you were also practicing your art skills. And luckily, every computer came pre-installed with a top-of-the-line painting software that every artist needs. Yeah, this program's got it. My dumb man could never fucking find it. Everything! There's a line Sorry. tool and a bucket tool Shadow. and a circle tool. Ah. And sometimes when I was really bored, I would make a black rectangle, scribble the freeform selection tool on it, and then blammo! Yeah, I still got it. I just made a masterpiece. And, fun James bonus tip, for some extra self-induced epilepsy, hold down Control i which will invert the colors so your masterpiece will go... Ah, oh my god! Oh, it hurts to look at! Hey, <laughs> looks like you're trying to create a conclusion to this YouTube video. Would you like my help? No, Clippy. Even when you were around, I never used you. <laughs> I just liked having you there to keep me company. The internet is still a relatively new invention that is ever changing the way we live. And we have yet to see the full effects of what being connected since birth does to a person. The fact that the accumulation of all human knowledge can now fit in your pocket? That's going to affect your day-to-day -day life! Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you to get off the internet, touch grass, and live your life to the fullest. Otherwise, I'd be a hypocrite and unemployed. Mm. There's no denying all the positive things that the internet has to offer, but I'm also not going to deny all the negative things that come with instant gratification too. As technology advances, so too do we advance the amount of time we spend online. The internet can connect us to a million different people and perspectives that we never would have been exposed to before, but it can also expose us to some really nasty people and perspectives. And the only thing we can do about those people is shrug and say, Sorry, that's the internet. So, are we, as a society, better off with the internet? 
I think so. But just, God I don't damn. know, just remember to drink water and stretch. All right, that's the lesson of this video. Go stretch. I'm serious. Right now, go touch your toes. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching this video. Fam, I ain't gonna lie. Some people be over you in the goddamn internet. I'm just saying. Some people do. Shit, but without internet, shit, I wouldn't be doing this right here. Trying to make it as a YouTuber, you know. But if y'all like this video, bro, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, comment down below what y'all want to see. And we out, boy.